Now, something interesting here, and just, just I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to do this, folks. Now, we talked earlier about satanic ritual abuse. Now we're talking about how Chinese scientists claim they've reversed aging through what they're calling a, a vampiric method. <laughs> this was not intentional, but now I'm realizing that seems to be oddly connected. But let me show you this. Yahoo News is reporting this. Chinese scientists develop vampiric technique that may reverse the aging process. And this is important because, well, the way that they're doing these types of studies in China, oftentimes. Published last month in the peer-reviewed journal Cell, Cell Stem Cell, the study led by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is involved with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, involves surgically connecting the circulatory system of old mice to those of younger specimens. And it's saying that uh, after being injected with blood taken from the young mice, the old ones reportedly lived longer. So they're taking mice and they're connecting the circulatory system of old mice and young mice and finding that the young mice can basically revitalize the old mice by doing that. And then by taking the blood from the young mice and injecting it into the old mice, they find that the old ones are able to live longer. Now, they've done studies like this in other regards elsewhere, but in China, where they're doing these studies, this is extremely, extremely problematic because were they to ever do this on humans, which is the way they're suggested this could be used, uh, this, of course, ties to the Chinese Communist Party's systems for live organ harvesting, a uh, practice in which they use well, prisoners of conscience, among them the, lar the largest group being Falun Gong practitioners, a meditation practice based on truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. 100 million people practicing by 1999 who've been used as like cattle by the Chinese Communist Party for their organs and for organ transplants, including for organ tourism and for people traveling to China to save their lives by killing another person. Uh, they often do these practices while the person is still alive because they find it maintains organ health and they often do it without painkillers. The stories of this are absolutely horrifying. Epic Times was the first media to break the stories on this going back to, I believe, like 2006, I think, around the time when I started with Epic Times, actually. And I can tell you, when we first had these stories coming out, they were shocking and difficult to believe at the time, but we had whistleblowers step forward, one of whom uh, was the wife of a doctor who, whose job in China uh, was to remove the corneas from the eyes of children for transplant. Uh, children who were still alive when they were doing it. We broke the stories on this. We've had many whistleblowers since then step forward, and it was absolutely horrifying, the evidence we found. And as we speak now, the reports we had back then have been validated. Uh, there's many reports on this, including Bloody Harvest. Uh, David Kilgore, David Mattis uh, have, have done reports on this in Canada. Uh, it was this, it was affirmed in studies in the UK, and actually many members of Congress have now publicly, uh, you know, publicly denounced the Chinese Communist Party's practice on this. And so, I've personally investigated a lot of this, and you know, again, people call this conspiracy theorists as quick, but uh, sorry, can call this conspiracy theorists at first, but all of our reporting has since been validated, and this is absolutely happening in China. When, remember, when the Chinese Communist Party, when COVID first had outbreaks, they did what they called the first human transplant for lungs, because again, they said COVID was affecting the lungs in such a way where it was gumming people's lungs up. And the CCP did a lung transplant, and that horrified people because they said, well, where'd you get the lungs? All right. Now they found a new type of transplant again, involving the circulatory system and human well, mice blood, but they're suggesting it could be done in humans. Uh, extremely problematic as this goes forward. Um, one of the reasons why, frankly, there needs to be really universal restrictions and universal condemnation on the Chinese Communist Party's organ transplant systems. Um, and briefly on that too, one problem we have in China is that Chinese traditional belief is very strict about not desecrating a dead body. Um, in Chinese religion, for example, this would be considered one of the major sins. It was something you would never do. 
And so people don't, you know, sign up to be organ donors. Typically it's, you don't do it. It's, they believe that if you desecrate the body it will affect like the soul even. So they don't do that. Right. Um, because they don't have a donor system in China, the way the CCP does it is they take it from, you know, prisoners the, and they say death row prisoners. And the problem with that in China is that, well, what constitutes a death row prisoner? Because a lot of things are illegal in China, including like believe, you know, being a Christian or being a Muslim or being a Falun Gong practitioner or believing in democracy. And so prisoners of conscience, religious believers are used in this way in, in extremely horrifying manners. Now, speaking of man-made horrors, another story here, uh, which actually I'd say is very concerning about the direction society is heading in. There's an AI expert now saying that we're going to have virtual babies within 50 years. And this is something many people are talking about. Um, Let's go into this, folks. This is uh, New York Post saying, if you thought the Tamagotchi generation, if anyone is too young to remember Tamagotchis, there were these little keychain things that had little virtual pets people were into. They say it was a 1990s phenomena. Think again, in the not so distant future, those looking to expand their families may opt to do so with the help of artificial intelligence. And they're saying amid poverty, disease epidemics, climate change and overcrowding, Experts worry that the estimated 11 billion people that will populate Earth by 2000, or sorry, 2100 won't get the food, health care, and other essential resources they need for survival. And there's a real concern for would-be parents. First of all, I disagree with most of this. I don't think the Earth's at risk of any of this. But this is the way they're saying it. Uh, that again, they won't get the health care they need because of that. And that's a real concern for would-be parents, according to a, 20, a 2020 YouGov poll that found nearly 10% of adults have already chosen to remain childless for these reasons, while another 10% cited the financial impact of having children. Now, in this article, they're basically, in many out there, they're suggesting that children are like basically too expensive and that they're a threat to the environment in a weird way. And they're saying the green solution. The Earth-friendly solution is to have an AI child, have a virtual child. And so you can essentially play a, a virtual reality video game and pretend, pretend you have kids because they're claiming humans are now the threat to the environment. Now, aside from being weird, frankly, in my opinion, the idea of people having virtual children and already you have weird stuff like this taking place in some smaller cases, like in Japan, where people are marrying their virtual wives or whatever, right? You have weird stuff like this, but the broader implication of it, now aside from what that means to, for society and the way things are heading, the broader implications of this are the reasoning they're saying for why this would be justified. Now, the reason they're saying this would be justified is that they're saying kids are like a threat to the environment, that humans themselves are a global warming threat. And that, that's that's kind of the what people have been saying for a long time about why the global warming cult, I guess you could call it, is so weird which is that if they're claiming carbon is the threat and we're made of carbon, are they saying humans are the threat? And if they believe that humans are a threat to the environment, what does that mean for all these policies they're rolling out in terms of regulating such things? Uh, concerning future with all this and the implications that could come up, again, we're at the kind of beginning of all this, but could come up.